My name is Dean, and in this very special three-part episode of Lake Log, I'm not really here. I'm in Africa. Well, I am here on Lake Osborne right now, but in June, my family and I were over 4,000 miles away in Zambia on the trip of a lifetime. Africa yaka kombore kombore se kuchindi wa wano shima mwari Africa yaka kombore kombore se kuchindi wa wano shima mwari se kuchindi wa njiwo 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 se kuchindi wa wano shima mwari se kuchindi wa njiwo 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 we flew from Miami to London, about 4,400 miles. From London, we took the short flight to Glasgow, another 350 miles. From Glasgow, we flew another 3,600 miles to Dubai. And after a long layover and a change of planes, we then made the 3,300-mile trip to Zambia and the capital city of Lusaka. Total distance traveled? About 11,740 miles. And what did I know about Zambia before visiting Zambia? Almost nothing. Here's what I've learned since then. Zambia, or the Republic of Zambia, has a population of over 19 million people. The official language is English, although there are 73 ethnic groups in Zambia and just about as many dialects. The Zambian government seems to have a healthy awareness of the value of its natural resources and has set aside some 30% of its land for wildlife. There are 20 national parks and 30 wildlife management areas, and this helps sustain the amazing biodiversity of Zambia. More than 3,500 wild plants, 242 mammal species, and an estimated 757 bird species. Our ultimate destination was the Lower Zambezi National Park and visits to Chawa Camp and Old Mondoro, two of several camps created and run by the Cummings family of Chawa Safaris, Zambia's premier safari hosts. Over the past 30 years, Chawa Safaris has become world-renowned for unparalleled accommodations and comfort, expert guides, stewardship of natural resources, tireless efforts to eradicate poaching, and for their commitment and financial contributions to the conservation of Zambia's natural heritage. We are deeply grateful for the time we spent with the Cummings family and for the hospitality they and their team so graciously extended during this, our first family trip to Africa. Before heading to the camps, we warmed up our African adventure with a fairly civilized visit to Victoria Falls, a little more than an hour's flight southwest of Lusaka to Livingston. Victoria Falls is one of the seven natural wonders of the world and is a World Heritage Site. The falls are on the border between Zambia and Zimbabwe and are one of the world's largest waterfalls, over a mile wide and over 350 feet high, twice the height of Niagara Falls and more than twice as wide. There are over 70 dialects in Zambia and in the Lozi tongue, Victoria Falls is known as Mozioatunya, or the smoke that thunders. Mist from the falls rises as high as 1,300 feet and can be seen from up to 30 miles away giving the impression of smoke from a really big fire. The 1,600-mile-long Zambezi River flows across a relatively flat plain to drop suddenly into Victoria Falls Gorge, a sharply defined chasm caused by a fault line in the underlying basalt. Basically, it's a big crack in the ground. Over time, the river has eroded the chasm in chunks and blocks giving the gorge its sharp and jagged appearance. From the falls, the Zambezi zigzags its way eastward and ultimately into the Indian Ocean. There are a lot of animals around the falls and on the grounds of the nearby resorts too. We stayed at the Avani Resort which is located within Mozioatunya National Park and is a short walk from the falls. The Royal Livingston is a little farther upstream, 
a great place to enjoy sundowners on the Zambezi. Along with monkeys and baboons, it's not uncommon to see a crocodile in the water, or impala, zebra, and giraffes walking freely through the resorts. These animals are used to people, but are in no way tame, so guests are advised to give them lots of space. We watched this giraffe as it fed on the trees around the Royal Livingston. The giraffe's tongue is prehensile, like a monkey's tail, and is thick and tough, so the giraffe can carefully pull delicate leaves from the thorny branches without injuring itself. It's hard to describe the feeling of watching a wild African giraffe as it feeds, and I really did think about it a lot. Uh, all I could come up with was, it's a wild African giraffe feeding in Africa, and I'm watching it. The trails around the falls provide multiple vantage points to the main cataract and the twisting gorge below. If you don't mind getting wet, there's the narrow Knife's Edge Bridge, sometimes completely obscured by the rising and falling mist from the thundering waterfall. We walk the Boiling Pot Trail down to the river's edge at the bottom of the gorge. It's a zigzagging 300-foot descent to the bottom and is a great way to see the tropical forest within the gorge. and then you have to hike back up. We also walked the trail up on the top rim. Views down into the gorge were spectacular, and there isn't much separating you from the chasm below. On the trail, I bought some souvenirs from a local named Mike. I knew I was paying too much, but I respected his friendly sales pitch, and I didn't mind doing my part for the local economy. Along with the Mozio Atunya name, the falls are also known as Chongwe, the place of the rainbow, and there are lots of rainbows to see. Mozio Atunya has inspired generations of explorers, artists, and photographers, drawn to the falls by its raw power and natural beauty, and it does thunder, with an average annual water flow of 38,000 cubic feet per second. A quick Google search revealed lots of renditions of this amazing riverscape and lots of rainbow pictures, too. It seems like every visitor has captured their own personal Mozio Atunia rainbow. Here's mine. And what about the wildlife? I saw and recorded my first African hornbill while on the trails near the falls. These are trumpeter hornbills, which are known to be highly intelligent and can live for up to 30 years. There were also a lot of baboons on the trails near the falls. They can be aggressive when young or nearby, but mainly avoid people. As wild as they are, these baboons appear used to trash cans and human food waste and aren't shy about taking advantage of it, even if it is just for entertainment. These youngsters focused their play on a plastic shopping bag, but abandoned it for the tree branches, which to them were ultimately more fun. break by this little one to check with mom, have a snack, and then it's back up in the tree to play. Through play, these baboons are learning their place in baboon society. Watch how this older baboon shakes the branch that the little one is on to establish a bit of dominance. I think this little one's going to do just fine.
It was fun to watch the young baboons play, but I always kept a watchful eye on the adults. In a situation like this, super telephoto lenses are a godsend. And it would be on the next part of our adventure, once we reached Old Mondoro Camp, that I would realize the difference between watching animals in a largely human space, like at Victoria Falls or here on Lake Osborne, and watching them in a natural space on their terms. And the experience of that observation for me has been life-changing. In the next part of our adventure, we leave the wild waters of Victoria Falls behind and we head into the African bush. And let me tell you something, I was not prepared for what I was gonna see. Beep, 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 beep.